Hey there, it is your Chapo. This is Amber. I am here with Will and very special guest, Catherine Liu. Catherine has just written a book called Virtue Hoarders, The Case Against the Professional Managerial Class. It is a short, quick, mean read. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do a little shopping. Do a little shopping for the PMC. So, Catherine, uh, thanks very much for being on. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, would you like to give us just a brief rundown of what uh, the professional managerial class is and why and how they are able to hoard something as ephemeral as virtue? Okay, so the professional managerial class really comes out of John and Barbara Ehrenreich's idea in 1977 that the American left was increasingly dominated by these like um, college educated people who held work, who held certain like countercultural values, but mostly thought the working class of America was really um, retarded, tear, like literally retarded and backwards. And so this class didn't used to always have this kind of contempt for the working class. If you look at a history of um, professionals, doctors, managers, white color workers, social workers, they were terrified of the working class. Like at the end of the 19th century, when there were all, all of this working class unrest, and they did want to come in and sort of provide solutions. They were much smaller class then. They were much less powerful, huge working class, small white collar, salaried employees. And then its numbers exploded as capitalism became more complicated and there was more like division of labor. And, you know, today it really dominates what we call content production, content consumption, the creative industries, what the air and I call the liberal industries. And I feel like their values are kind of like the air we breathe and it's poisoning us. So I wrote this very polemical thing that was not going to be like part of the I didn't want to add to the discourse of the PMC, which is very much like I told you so. Or, you know, Mark says this and Aaron I say this and this happened here. I, my premise in writing this was like, all of you know what this class is. Most of you are reading it, have imbibed its poisonous, toxic values. Let's try to undo it together. Like there's a lot of debate right now online about the book and then people are calling me a fascist. But also be like, well, Mark <laughs> said... Well, Marx said, I'm like, you know what? Marx doesn't live in 2021. Okay, little know-it-alls. Yeah, it lectured me on Marx. This is a new class formation, and it is dominating our world. It dominates you. It alienates you at work. Um, I can't, there are also like people who are emailing me from all over the world, from doctors to union organizers in New Zealand who are like, oh my God, I really recognize this. Like this one person in New Zealand, I'm not, you know, they're all anonymous because they're terrified of their bosses and their workplaces. And they're like, you know, union organizing is just completely paralyzed in New Zealand. Our housing costs are going through the roof. But as long as we treat the Maoris like they're magic, we're actually okay on the progressive <laughs> thing. So I was thinking like professional managerial class people actually treat minorities like they're magic. And that magic has to do with actually suppressing class. Okay, so that that's my very polemical introduction. Sorry, guys, I just uh, decided to refund it. Can I just say one other thing about them, though? And oh, this sorry. is very much about the par product review. So I've been thinking about how the PMC hates materialism, historical materialism, like a history of its own role in creating the economic disaster that is capitalism. But they also hate, like, just being materialistic because they're so virtuous and they're so rich they can curate their items, commodities. It's like working class louts, like consume with, you know, without impulse control. But they're all, because you're going to talk about a Marie Honda, like giving joy, you know, looking at things, giving joy. They consume even with virtue, which is why I actually hate ad busters, because ad busters made working class people feel like they were just horrible people because they bought brands. And they were, because they're cheap. If you buy a knockoff Nike shirt, it's fucking cheap. So, uh, but the um, virtuous PMC will not do that. They don't want brands. And so this is, right. so they hate materialism of all sorts, both of the left-wing kind and of the sort of commonsensical kind. Can I can I check in here? It's uh, it's uh, Will here. I have a question about the uh, the title. It's it's, uh, it's it's the phrase virtue hoarding. And I'm just wondering here if you, if you could talk about how does one hoard virtue? I mean, I, I like to I like to hoard all things, but virtue above all, because it's the most prized thing one can have. Do hoard pets. <laughs> uh, 
actually. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you only have one. You only have one. I yes, got two three cats. On, on camera. On camera. Oh, you have three cats. He, oh, he's a cat lady. Okay. okay. Sorry, but okay, you are a hoarder. Um, you heard virtue by actually making yeah um the notion of this restrained um relationship to language, politics, consumption, everything else, like a special quality that you and your friends possess and that you control. It's like perfectly ideological, but it also, and it's a veil of actually them hoarding opportunity, vaccines, money, but they, they hoard the, the, um, the surface level of this is they hoard this idea of like an American pro it's actually very Protestant I, um, notion of restraint, of um, open-mindedness, of tolerance, of, um, you know, being like a good Christian person. It's very crypto-Christian. They're very secular, but it's actually very, very crypto-Christian. And it has to do with like having restraint with regard to the other. So, you know, what other people who like, if you curse or if you just like act like, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to nerd out here, like, Rabelaisian or carnivalesque, if you eat too much, if you do any, this all like, it offends um, the PMC somehow. So they manage their own appetites. And the virtue for them is very much about management of themselves, of impulses, and management of inequality right now. That's how they see inequality, like something to manage the other, something to manage work, something to manage. It's a full on explosion of the managerial ethos that governs all aspects of relations it has killed liberal politics in the United States. So much as you'd say, you know, Donald Trump, whatever, he's a fascist, whatever. I don't think so. He's a clown. He was like the pure id of hatred of the PMC. Yeah. Well, he refused kind of um, respectable liberal abstemiousness, which is what yep. we want from exactly. our elites is uh, people who pretend like they don't have a ton of money and they aren't enjoying it. Right. And on that note, I thought one of the ways we could sort of tease out um, the ways in which uh, the PMC hoards virtue is we could do, I made a little shopping list. I made a little uh, PMC shopping list and we could go through all these little uh, PMC products and sort of maybe talk about why they exist, why they appeal to the people they appeal to. So oh I put the God, first you could, one. You really, you really collected some very weird, <laughs> weird, very weird shit. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm yeah. Up. Yeah. Well, um, as a, as a, God, as, as an outsider of the PMC who um, neither manages nor uses any professional skills, I have a lot of time to look at weird uh, sponsored ads for what they think I, I do want. Mm -hmm. So uh, first thing I put up on here, thinks the period underwear, uh, which... Uh, is this very like uh, if, if you go there, of course, the coloring of the website is millennial pink. So it's very much kind of a millennial bent to it. Um, there's all kinds of different uh, bodies of different shapes and sizes. Some are more athletic. Some are more curvaceous. Uh, there's different races. They all look very vibrant. They're not doing anything real. But the, the subtext is that um, all of them are menstruating into this expensive underwear. Now, this product to me was always interesting and it reminded me of uh, when I first uh, went to college and, um, and I did a, a final semester uh, not at the satellite urban campus for quote-unquote non-traditional students, um, but at the, the main campus at, at, uh, at IU Bloomington. And I did that for one semester, so I was around all these children of the middle class and um, they... We're talking once at an internship that I was doing, which of course, because that's what I figured you do, as a that's how you become PMC. And they were saying, you know, you really don't have to bathe that much. And they were all going through this period of, no pun intended, of uh, the idea that um, cleaning yourself is actually um, like, you know, if you wash your hair too much, you strip the oils. There's some truth to that. But by the end of it, I was like, oh my god you people are dirty. And when I look at things, I see it as such a retrograde thing with all the advances we've made in general cleanliness, with disposable products, with uh, tampons that you can just fucking throw away. And they're like, no, 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 no. You're going to be wearing a garment. We're going back to 
washing your menstrual rags on a river rock. That is the <laughs> abstemious, <laughs> pure thing to do. This is somehow actually better than just having a tampon or a pad that you could just throw away. That's very base. That stuff contains, you know, that's bad for the environment. Um, unlike these polyester panties. Their slogan is, what does a more sustainable period look like? That's literally their <laughs> slogan. I mean, What does a more sustainable period look like? I'd say like just bleeding down your leg then, you know, that's what yeah. it looks like. Yeah, why, why clean ourselves at all? But like given like the general like PMC sort of trajectory of the professionals to be very clean, what is with this weird pivot to like, walking around in a pile of your own period blood. And how is that suddenly, like, the thing to do? Like, every once in a while, the PMC seems to eschew their um, kind of Protestant uh, antiseptic idea of how to live rightly, and they're just fucking nasty. <laughs> Why do they do that? Um so here's the thing about the PMC is that because they inherited their ethos from the counterculture, they actually kind of hate modernity and they want to live like, but they want to live with the conveniences of modernity without like taking responsibility for any of the damages. So they want to have the sustainable period. They want to recycle. They think it's all about this kind of individual virtue of not harming the environment by throwing your tampons in the trash or something like that. And, um, and there's this very strong strain of anti-modern, anti-modernity ethos in them. It's like their embrace of, you know, alternative healing is also part of that. But, you know, part and wellness programs and stuff like that. They want to commodify. This is weird, though. These panties are just weird. I don't even know if they sell very much. But didn't the CEO of this company, like, harass and, like, abuse her employees a couple of years ago? This was like the... This was also the uh, controversy about thinks too that I remember, which was that she was basically like a horrible bitch, but but she's like super virtuous because she's having sustainable periods. She's having super sustainable periods. No, she had um, all of these employees sue her. I can't even believe this company is really um, even viable. So my my thing about this is that I don't think she's sold that many pairs. But we have so much excess capital running around in the world. And these Silicon Valley people are just like ready to disrupt anything. And if it's your period, they're going to give you money for that. They, right now, there is so much excess capital in the hands of total fuckheads. And they will just <laughs> give money to these startups, which never have to make any money, but have this beautiful like millennial pink website and these weird... You it's know, um, thirty four dollars like, for one pair of hip huggers that frankly look kind of dowdy and they're not like they're not erotic. They're not like sleazy cheap lingerie that like is tacky but obviously hot. They're very like they look like uh I don't know, church lady underwear, but also I, you can bleed What are you going to, how are you going to wash this? Like you're going to have like your, all of your washing machine is going to be filled with blood. Sorry, Will, <laughs> this is like a very real, well, we're getting yeah, real here. We're getting very real here. Don't girl. worry, Will, well, we get to the power. In the interest of full disclosure, I should probably <laughs> confess to the fact that I am uh, currently wearing right now what I think are the male equivalent <laughs> of uh, Think's underwear. <laughs> The Mac Weldon podcast underwear with silver antimicrobial oh, we, uh, technology get to, to make Mac my uh, balls and dick uh, not smell. <laughs> um, does, are they are they diapers too? Do they double as diapers? <laughs> Unfortunately, you, I cannot just uh, soil them uh, openly. Okay, but okay. I got it. I got to say, oh, yeah. uh, they're 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 quite nice underwear to wear. Uh, you know, are they I mean, sustainable? Just, just, are they sustainable? I, I, are they made from oh, God, plastic no. bottles? God no. Yeah. Right, so you're not, you're not especially at the same level. Especially because Will just wears one pair and then just throws it out the window after a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, no, but that's, think that's, of the like name, that. Amber. Amber, think of the name. Thinks. With an X. I N X. Like, what the hell is that? You're yeah. thinking. Your pussy's thinking. You're having. It's a thoughtful menopause. It's, I mean, it's a thoughtful menstruation. Yeah, m my the menopause. My pussy is not contemplative. My my pussy's dumb as hell. Um. <laughs> It just needs cotton. Uh, so I, that I is did, very the PMC way. there to make your pussy actually be reflective, like mindful, <laughs> the mindful, the mindful pussy. This is <laughs> this is the PMC pussy, very mindful. Um, I did, by the way, look up uh, the the um, the CEO is what she called herself. Uh, Nikki, 
No. Mickey no. Agrawal, and she uh, no. uh, allegedly wanted to break taboos about the female body, like, you know, cleanliness. Um, and, uh, yeah, she, she, she her boundary-baking her- workplace behavior, she would, like, video conference naked. She yeah. would, like... It, it like um, it, she, and the idea that it's like a cult leader that's like actually uh-huh. I'm in direct uh, commune with um, you know the the sacred spirits and they say uh, I get to fuck you. It's the same kind of like right. no no. She would comment on her um, like uh, female employees' boobs and she would grab them. She was like the first pussy grabber, I think, and uh, the CEO. Yeah, very transgressive. Uh, Catherine, I want to ask. Uh, some of you said earlier about how the, uh, the, the this kind of ideology is, is is sort of like a mutated form of Protestantism, and like it's just mm-hmm. kind of a, sort of a perverted Calvinism here, where it's just sort of like only the elect can enter heaven, but no one can really know who the elect are, and it's already decided even before you're born, it's predestined. But your behavior in this life, you know, why not just say fuck it? I'll do whatever I want; doesn't matter anyway. Uh, but your behavior in this life is like those that were elect will act in a way that is, uh, you know, that, that is associated with the values of, you know, being chosen by God. It, are these products sort of a way of demonstrating that one is one of of an elect, even though you, you, oh, could yeah. be, you could be as damned as everyone else is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These products are very much like niche products. The PMC loves niche. You know, they remind me, the, the entire class these days reminds me of like that, that 90s. You guys were too young then, but like that horrible oh, 90s boyfriend that. who always had like um, a mixtape that nobody else knew about. And then they were like really proud right. of their live mixtape. It was all, it's all about this um, secret it's fashion. knowledge. It's fashion in the tr- in the traditional, in like the f- fin de siècle or whatever, how you pronounce it. Like it's fashion. It's about keeping up with what is the latest, like, progress. It's Stepan Arkekiewicz with his uh, liberal newspaper. But at least the fashionistas were dandies, and they were, like, yeah. you know, really mean and, you know, mean campy bitches. But, um, the like, one of the reasons why I feel like I'm so immersed in this culture is because I had a kid in the year 2000. And, like, I actually had friends who were had enrolled their kids in something called the Infant Education Program because it was okay. all about yep. optimizing your 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 experience and your children and um the infant education program was for me like the baseline of um pmc notions of consent around sex because you had to tell your baby what you were doing to it at all times like hi little three three month old i'm going to pick you up now or little (laughs) darling boo boo i'm going to change your diaper now or i'm going to move your penis this way so i can clean you with this little antimicrobial cloth and it was like that was a notion of consent, like your baby was consenting to being, you know, handled, and because that was respecting the agency of the baby. Babies have no agency. Babies are dumb as hell, and they're little tyrants. And if they had their way, uh, they're pure they would in. Rule they're, the world they're, with an iron, iron fist. They yeah. want the they want the boob. They want the tit. You know, they want to pee. They want to poop wherever they want to. But like, you have to have this like. Um, respectful relation. Oh yeah, and you can't like um, encourage your baby to do anything like sit or walk because that's like about what you want. So you have to make the baby um, understand that he or she can you know do whatever they want. Like uh, I'm telling okay, you, well like, I, I refuse to ever, I refuse to ever respect a baby. I will never respect a baby. That's one this thing. This was I huge promise. in Silver Lake. This was huge in Los Feliz. Like this was huge in that like whole creative industries Hollywood gentrifying neighborhood where um, I learned about this and was humiliated by the fact that I did not do this to my baby. <laughs> okay, uh, well, on that note, because we don't want to, like, get to in the weeds here, let's move on to babies. I have two more products in the chat. One is the Nanit Plus. Again, there's a lot of pink. Everything everything looks pink. And the other is the Owlet Smart Sock. Okay, so the Nanit is called one of the best inventions of 2018 by Time Magazine. It's a baby monitor um, that kind of looks like a little bit like Hal um, from two thousand one. It, looks like, a shower space head. it looks like a shower head you put in a crib. I was thinking, like, is this an automatic baby washer? When I first saw it, and it's actually a camera. <laughs> uh, and uh, it is. It is. It's a camera. It's just your. It's advertised as your baby's personal sleep trainer, sensor free breathing motion monitoring. And your baby book on autopilot. It says it keeps babies connected or keeps families connected. 
uh, measures temperature and humidity, uh, safety cables, so you don't set your baby on fire with an electrical fire. <laughs> it has um, a giant Velcro thing that you have to put on your baby. It's a, it's got a Velcro eye sensor you put on your baby, and then that camera looks at your baby. Yes, the camera monitors your baby because your baby wears a kind of motion tracking <laughs> swaddle. <laughs> yes, thing. Baby Max. Yeah, that's what it is. That's totally um, what it is. The other one, the Owlet Smart Sock, is similar, uh, just as men- and menacing. Also, a bit, um, also Bluetooth enabled, connect to your phone, has an app. This one is just uh, a sock. The website is actually the. Um, the thing that came after Millennial Pink, like Enlightenment Green or whatever, this washed out Jake Green. Elizabeth Which, by Warren the way, is three hundred dollars. Yes, yeah. Elizabeth Warren Green. Yeah, it's got that this Warren energy. It's no so three hundred dollars. Like, I I did a little research on this product when I published this piece on Jacobin on children and socialism. So it kind of wraps around your baby's foot and has all these sensors and it keeps like emitting all this data into your smartphone so you can so Fitbit track your baby. For your baby, yeah, it's, a, it's a foot Fitbit. It's a foot yeah. bit for your baby. But um, the really, really depressing thing about this company is that it got startup funding from the Obama administration. The oh, my God. Yeah, it got a million dollars of funding. Like, it was part of, like, the American Recovery well, Act. Well, you funding. know what? He's not, this is like he's Solyndra, still not done. but for babies. He, he's still not done extending the, uh, the surveillance state. Now no, he's surveilling babies. no. no. Like, that's a million dollars down the toilet. Like, uh, you know, all of these, like, people, like, welfare moms or humanities professors are accused of wasting public dollars. Like, what happened to those public dollars? Are they, and is this a successful item? That's the other thing I want to know. Like, are they are they making yeah, money? Yeah, I, I don't know if any of these things, we, you can never know. That everything's really opaque about this economy, too, where, especially with startup stuff, it's like, oh, this product could exist for years and years and years with no one buying it based just on speculation and hype yeah. this thing by the way uh the outlet uh so smart it says uh tracks baby's oxygen and heart rate uh measures sleep trends and my favorite tells you when baby needs you as if the baby <laughs> does not in baby fact, can't do it right baby can't tell you that baby scream doesn't cry. You. your baby doesn't <laughs> scream you just get like an update on your phone when it's like your baby has fallen into the pool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then this is there, this your baby it, your has no more oxygen. There's no more oxygen, oxygen in the room. <laughs> yeah. The wait, room has uh, run but, out of oxygen. Yeah, wait, uh, Catherine, I mean, like, whether it's uh, these baby monitoring products or like what you were saying about um, uh, do you consent to have your, your, your butt wiped? Um, it just it does seem like a lot of like the energies of these people are very much, you know, like, first of all, a lot of their jobs are in education. And it seems like most of their energy is focused at like like children or like raising better, more conscientious uh, individuals. And it just is it, it's all part of this kind of like meritocratic arms race where everyone's kid yeah. is this sort of like individual node of competition, just not not just against every other kid in their play group, but like against like a billion Chinese babies. Right. Like they were, you know, they're good at math. Yes, and, uh, yeah. Uh, right. No, no. That's the like, this is for like your inarticulate baby, but then you've got to be optimizing after they can like get up and walk. Yeah. I, it, you know, it does have this, there is a kind of anxiety that moves from my baby doesn't get enough oxygen and I don't know how to tell if it's getting <laughs> enough oxygen to my child is failing, you know, third grade or my child, my child did not get into the most exclusive New York kindergarten so what am i going to do it's like this is just the beginning of the anxiety and then uh, parents have a lot of anxiety it's like very anxious making to have a kid especially in this neoliberal hell world but um all of these things including the meritocracy just exploit like parental anxiety so think about like working class parents they don't even like they can't they're not even on the field at this point. You know, mer- the meritocracy is like the supposed even playing field. Like you can't even get your kid on this field anymore. And because the um, PMC parental anxiety is just so extreme and they keep coming up with these new techniques, new um, schools that cost a lot of money, new specialized, you know, curricula to um, enhance your child's creativity and b- critical thinking like I, I even think like the way that progressive um, schools in New York City have been co- completely colonized 
by these Wall Street types. It's just another example of this, like all these like funky leftist schools, like the Little Red Schoolhouse in the West Village. I don't know. You guys, so my dad kids, went. You know what? Yeah, Your my dad. dad went. Went. Red well, diaper was, babies used to go yes, there. Red, red diaper babies literally went to the Little Red Schoolhouse. Now it's like a sixty bajillion dollars a year. And you have to compete with like you and, you know, top flight, you know, Boutros, Boutro Gali's um, grandchild and then like um, Felix Rohatton's, you know, great grandson or whatever. It's like all of the masters of the universe want progressive education too for their kids because they think like that's also like optimizing, that's also enhancing. So anything that you, other people, that most people can't get, like specialized treatment, these kinds of luxuries gadgets they want to monopolize for their own kids and unfortunately leftist ch- children's education little red and the chicago lab school were um all super wealthy pmc people and it's interesting because like that style that style of education makes a marked contrast with um like the new york city's charter schools which are you know uh, offered as like a solution to the problems of uh, like low income families and their education in the public school system, which is this like highly disciplined, like regimented, like you yeah. can't open your mouth in class, you can't talk or chew gum, you can't like you know look mm-hmm. uh, you know another yeah. way or, or talk to a classmate or anything. Whereas like right. you know like these the, these very progressive private schools are all about like you know nurturing and creativity yeah. and things and. The charter schools, which are these same people are promoting for like yeah low low income children, is this like you know military yeah, school right. style discipline right. being imposed on these kids? Right, but for their kids, progressive education for their high kids Montessori, testing. yeah, high, high stakes, stakes testing for, for the poor, and uh, you get a giraffe in spelling for the the wealthy. <laughs> and yeah, and I I also think like the um, whole re- discipline regime and high stakes testing is also about disciplining the teachers. So like yes. if you're a public school teacher, you're completely fucked because you have to do this um, really, really highly controlled regime and you can't be creative. But in these really specialized, you know, what used to be left wing schools, the teachers are given a lot of space for freedom in circle. You can do you can you can felt clothes. You can felt clothes if you're teaching them about production. And, you know, my um, I, I was really amazed, you know, that. Little Red was populated by all celebrities' kids. They do this whole year-long curriculum about the tri- Triangle Waste Fire, the Triangle Fire, the waste whatever fire that killed like two hundred women in the well, little uh, girls too. It, yeah, it killed girls. children too. Yeah, in the um, sweatshops of the early nineteenth century. Like they have all this social conscience, and it's almost like they, the PMC, the upper levels of the PMC especially, want to monopolize social conscience. Because they don't want. Okay, well, I've got a good anecdote about Little Red Schoolhouse that I have to get in here. Okay, okay. You know, they got in trouble two years ago for uh, their classroom uh, coordination. Do you know about this? No. Oh. Uh, well, they decided to segregate their black students into the same class specifically what? because they thought that was the woke thing to do because they. <laughs> They said that, like, they had to, um, uh, you know, have shared experiences. When, in fact, obviously, the the most significant experience as a student of the Little Red Schoolhouse is that you got to go to the Little Red Schoolhouse. So there were parents being like, why isn't my kid in the, the same class as her friends as last year? And they're like, well, we thought she'd like to be around other black kids. So we're going to have a black kid classroom. <laughs> That's insane. I I know. They've fallen so far. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, it's uh, apparently, I don't, they love homework. And they love turning their children into homework. Which just seems like such a, like, why would you have a baby if you're going to look at it on an app? Like, just play Candy Crush. Well, like, no, the other thing is that they, they turn their, ba- like, these gadgets have turned your baby into, like, the producers of data. Yes. And so and that actually happens like to us from the very beginning. Like, I'm really proud that I had a son whose foot length was in the 90th percentile. Like they tell you that the moment they're born, you're just surrounded by data. I yeah. Was like, oh, yeah. He's got really big feet. Oh, that's fantastic. 
<laughs> this is I think very, early very on. PMC. A lot of that stuff is too. Is they're just like, well, I don't know anything about this person, so I'm just grasping at straws. It's like when people are like, oh, like what? Don't ask a pregnant woman what the sex is, and it's like, look, I don't know anything about this person. There's one thing we could know from looking through a sonogram. I'm just trying to make conversation. I don't actually care. I'm trying to be polite. Well, um, you, w- when your baby becomes a source of data for you. Like, I feel like that's really the most, that's like you reached start. dystopia. You, you reached PMC dystopia, like, and and, and they tell you that, and they give you all this data from every doctor's office visit. So it's not like you can ever escape it. Like, you can't escape it. It's the regime. Right. Well, the weird thing about it is that I do feel like just to uh, sort of defend some semblance of what the PMC was um, or has been historically, you had... I mean, the Dr. Spock baby book is a really interesting cultural and social phenomenon because all of the sudden, like, Nixon you hated this it. class of women. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden you uh, had this class of women who, um, who, uh, like, they didn't have, they weren't rich enough to have, like, nannies or help, but also they lived isolated in the suburbs, so they didn't have their mother or even their grandmother to learn how to parent intergenerationally. Right. They didn't have you know, like uh, an extended family. So all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, what do I do with this baby? And he wrote actually this very groundbreaking book that was just very basic things that if you were around your mother or grandmother, you would know were just like, sometimes the baby cries and that's okay. And sometimes you can pick it up or sometimes you can let it cry. A lot of it is just like, you're fine. The baby's fine. It's stressful. And that completely went out, out of the way. Like it was this amazing, like, just relax kind of guidebook and it was incredibly popular even among like working class women too um because because it just sort of like gave it it filled a void of like what should have been like intergenerational family atomization and i and it's amazing now because nixon hated it thought it made hippies because it's like sometimes babies cry and that's okay and now People hate Dr. The PMC hates Dr. Spock because they think he's too much of a disciplinarian. Oh, really? Is that, yes. the, is that the MO? Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. So, so the whole thing is like, I think what's really interesting is that we all call him Dr. Spock. Yeah, yeah. Because he's still the expert. <laughs> like, without the family to help you or without, like, the agricultural whatever to um, sustain you, the village, HRC's village, you need the doctor. You need yeah. doctor. Not need everyone Dr. has Dr. Jill. You need yeah. Dr. Spock. <laughs> like the, the moniker, Dr. Spock, just like, te- to te- you need a doctor to tell you you know best. Because that's yeah, what yeah. Dr. Spock was really good at. It that's was, like yeah. Really All of his sad. stuff was his, like, you know best. It was yeah. like a very nice... You needed nice to read thing. it in a book. You yeah. needed to read it in a book. This is the evolution of the PMC for me. It's like yeah. expert advice and all this other stuff is all about, like, telling you you're okay and that is really sad that's really yeah. sad in well, all a, these, a book these, that you buy because you don't betty have any drapers. relationships with other people where they can tell you that yeah these betty drapers that were that would have been buying the book would of course like you know they're like well i want i want uh i want a doctor i want a professional okay so moving away from vaginas and babies um and towards uh towards uh, some high tea stuff i've put some uh Stuff in here. So I have two things here in contrast. I've got hymns, which is PMC Blue Chew, and then I've got Blue Chew. And I think it's worth bringing up both of these websites because hymns, hymns, okay. hymns first of all, an entire lifestyle brand. Uh, you, you're depressed, so you get your antidepressants. Um, you're uh, aging, so you get your skincare. Uh, but your antidepressants, no, they make your dick not work. Um, and so do the, so does the hair loss thing they sell you. So then they also sell you dick pills and tons of millennial pink, that font, the same font as thinks, um, you, all the, the, like, you know, the, it really features the smartphone though. Thinks had like women's crotches. I mean, this is like, why don't they show some peen? You know, this is like, yeah. hymns. well, uh, Where's Catherine, I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm like, well, here's the answer. If you, if you scroll down and under, under okay. sex, it's like a, it's like okay. a, a woman with her arms around her man, but then if you put the cursor over it, it just goes to a picture of a cactus straight in the air. Oh, yeah, 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 there's a that's, cactus. That's, that's, their, that's their stand-in for the uh, the the, the they phallus. Have to, they have is to a, uh, euphemize it. They, yeah. yeah. 
sit now on this. Now compare that. Now who would want that penis in their pussy? It's a cactus. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. It's penis. a cactus. That's not it's for the mindful pussy. It's a shaped cactus. That's like really bad PR for penises. Cactus uh, is a really bad PR for penises. Can we just say I know. that? We, okay. can, we, God, uh, we need, can we get some? Can we get the? Yeah, we need better PR people in the uh, in the penis <laughs> department. We got we got we got to move these units. Uh, yeah. The- <laughs> The dick image is uh, <laughs> is not doing well right it's now. It's so need anesthetized. To re-brand. It's so sanitized. It's so weird. And the okay, smartphone. Okay, but compare this to okay. Blue Chew, the working okay, I don't class know pins. Okay, I don't know this is the website Chew, right? after this. It's the same thing. Totally different aesthetic. It's the same <laughs> fucking dick you. pills. Is minus the skincare. Minus the, uh, uh, minus the antidepressants. It's just. What is It's this? the most. My dick doesn't work. I do not want to talk to anyone about it. What is this? The website oh, is wow. black. It's got a big made in the USA thing. The guy is just holding like a chewable. Uh, oh. It looks like a condom packet. It's all it's all black and blue. And it's like, here's what's included. It's chewable. It works really quickly. Here's a plan. It's like really utilitarian. Like, oh, so you this think is, this, this is, is the, the working this is class, the working class, class version. Version. Yes. of penis um, therapy? Because okay. it's not a lifestyle masculinity brand. Oh, it's right, just right, like, right. I have a problem. I need to fix it. Made in the USA, baby. I, I don't and know. That guy looks very groomed. That guy looks very groomed. But in, looks very groomed. In, in, in lieu of a, a, like a euphemistic, like, uh, you know, cactus or uh, eggplant or something. <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah, it's a guy who's very groomed, you but you know, he, yeah. you know he needs a dick pill because he's got some salt and pepper in his beard. <laughs> well, know, he's so got he's the salt and pepper, yeah. He's aging. Yeah. Yeah, he so looked a, he what, looks a little fake to, tanned. But, guys, uh, what happened yeah. to Viagra and Cialis? What, what well, happened because to like this? because those, those were marketed only for like your parents, right? It was like the elderly couple oh. in matching bathtubs, looking at a wheat field, and then like Bob yeah, Dole. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bob yeah, Dole yeah, yeah. was the original pitchman for Viagra, yeah, so yeah, it was, yeah, it was very yeah. much associated with like yeah, like re, yeah, your retired parents who were gonna like sort of rediscover <laughs> okay. their sex okay. life or have a kind but of but these a, things a second it's all proprietary too. God, these things are the exact same, like as they advertise the exact active ingredients in Viagra or Cialis. Okay. Like it's these are generics, and like that's one of the things that they figured out is they can brand the generics brand as something the generics. where the patent is up, and oh. and make it to like a birch box for dicks. Oh, um, okay, okay. So choose blue chew is for like the blue collar, yeah, erectile dysfunction, and the blue for him is for the PMC. Erectile dysfunction. I mean, I just think yeah. it's, it's 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 the exact same drug as Viagra and Cialis, but just in the way. Okay, it's marketed, got it, got it. it it's it's marketed it. to uh, people like you know, <laughs> like uh, not not your parents to you directly, and I think it's just basically like even if you're you know, don't actually have erectile dysfunction. I think it's just sort of like, you don't need to talk to a doctor. Like, I mean, you'll just like fill out a form and they'll start sending you these pills and it is basically just the recreational drug now. They're like, you know, like, you don't even need to have, okay. yeah, you don't even need to have yeah. dick problems. So like take the drug and then like your dick will be even better because, you know, if you don't have problems, you have to you optimize drug, your you'll dick. just have like a, you'll you have, have a super oh, dick. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Can we go back to the Cialis ad where you had like the people in life in uh, side by side, um, yeah, yeah. um, Victorian tubs, like how do you have sex with like you, yeah, with the, your partner, very... if you're lying in side by side tubs, <laughs> like I always was wondering about that. It's like. Uh, that looks more fun, like for the morphine drip. Like if you have a morphine drip and you're really old, <laughs> then you want to be side by side. But if you want to have sex, it's really not good to be in side by side bathtubs. Like I, I just totally. It was very like very prudish, right? Because there's actually no like genital contact, and these websites are also extremely prudish. Yeah, well, and the hymns is is like not just prudish. I think the blue chew is sort of like Protestant uh, salt of the earth. Uh, sort of stoic, um, or, or the, the blue chew is, and the hymns is almost kind of effete. They have a mission statement on the website that says, create an open and empowered male <laughs> culture that results in more proactivity <laughs> around health and preventative self-care. Okay, this, all these people hate pleasure. They actually hate fucking. Yeah. All of these drugs are supposed to facilitate the act of love, but all the stuff hates pleasure, including Cialis. Because if you were a complete idiot and you took Cialis and you were trying to find your side-by-side bathtubs and you had a big boner and your wife is sitting beside you, like that like actually defeats the purpose of the coital act. That's what I'm going to say. 
I just love that there's like a bougie version of of mail order dick pills. Okay, that has, I like, did not know that, that like all of this stuff had got. You know, you're opening up new new uh, new <laughs> realms of one. marketing. PMC uh, marketing Catherine, like, for me. You, when you said that these you said that these people hate pleasure and like uh, like that to me gets back to this whole sort of mutated Calvinism thing. Is, is it yeah. is, is the abstemiousness, but just yeah, like just sort of a. Uh, uh, joy, um, uh, uh, the baser uh, joys of life um, seem to be eschewed. And then there's like a whole ideology to sort of manage the, the, these baser human instincts and sort of... Uh, through sort of spin, performance, through, spin, through performance, yeah, yeah. sexual performance. It doesn't become coitus, it becomes sexual performance. It's also so like individualized monadic. It's not about like pleasing your partner. Like none of these things are like, your woman will love it if your dick is hard for, you know, 12 hours, whatever, she won't. But uh, PSA, she won't. But, you know, this, <laughs> there's no um, there's no evocation of the person you were pleasuring. It's all about some weird, like, optimization of self-administered wellness for the PM, for hymns and for Chewy. I don't know. It's like performance, right? Like, you're, I, I would think, like, this was a workout pill or something. I mean, there, it's, it it's not so about the, uns- the restoration of function. Like, even though dysfunction is the original, like, diagnosis it was meant to treat, it's not like my dick don't work. I got to make my dick work. Here's a pill. It's like you can be a better you. Your dick yes. can be harder. That's right. That's it can right. be so it, it, it occurs hard. To me, That's right. It occurs to me that That's the right. uh, the 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 Hokum uh, medicine show products and sawdust pills that are you know hawked in the back of Hustler magazine like are probably technically more woke because all of those products advertise themselves as like guaranteed to get your girl off. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. right. Right. Yeah, she'll love it. She'll love it. As <laughs> yeah. opposed to Blue it. Chew, which at half the time advertises like, hey, and maybe you just want to pop one for the weekend by yourself. <laughs> But speaking of pleasure <laughs> and pleasure, I put another link in here to uh, one of the PMC's favorite. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, I couldn't even open that one. When I saw that, I was like, I can't even read that. I need, like, help to read this. I need people so, to read this with me together. Unlike uh, we uh, debase uh, sensualists who, like, eat and have sex and do drugs because they're fun and we want to have a good time, um, the PMC has figured out how to turn doing drugs into homework. Uh, so I had an article here about microdosing, or as they put it, um, was it performance enhancing psychedelics? Uh, they're they're, they're biohackers. Emperor, they're biohackers too. Uh, biohackers. They're hacking th- biology. This is the darkest thing to me. It's like we accidentally discovered acid probably did all kinds of horrible CIA things with it. But now I thought we figured out what it was. It was a thing you do every few months. uh, And uh, when you're on the beach with your buddies and you think for a minute that you see God and then the next day you feel all right. And it's like, oh, that was a fun time. It's a little roller coaster ride. No, it's for work. It is for work. It's for work, yeah. I mean, I thought, like, I'm from the older generation where I thought, like, psychedelics was supposed to take you out of time, take you out of the work-leisure dichotomy and just put you in another time. And this is just, like, everything for that work. Is, that is also the best thing about acid is when you're like, oh, I can't believe, I can't believe, uh, you know, it's, we've been, I can't, I, like, this, the sense of loss of time, like, you, you, you yeah. lose your internal clock, yep. so you're like, oh, I can't, I can't believe this is almost over, and you're like, oh, it's only been 20 minutes, awesome, we got a whole new day of this, yep. you have no sense of that stuff, it's something most people in, with a regular job, or any sense of a schedule, can't ever enjoy, is, like, the loss of time, and now they're saying, no, use it to, like, code all fucking day, yep, yep, gross, I mean, it's just this idea that, like, you know, like, like, a, like a, a drug, like a drug experience will just sort of, like, you know, flush out whatever gunk is in your brain, and it, like, could be a, you know, a, a positive experience for your overall uh, mental uh, health and well-being. But now it's like you just do. It's like sort of like a like vaccine. You just do like a little bit of LSD to just right. keep the gears right. in your head turning with maximum efficiency. Right, right. They lo- no, they love that um, homeopathic thing where you know you turn. They, they acknowledge that it's like a toxin, but it's like homeopathy. It's like a microdose. So you get the benefits without 
the pleasure. You get the mental acuity without the pleasure. I just, I just feel like all of these people and the fetish that the culture has for them, um, they just actually hate life, don't they? They just kind of hate life. They certainly eat without tasting. I would say. But I also think that it's a way of um, punishing people who actually do drugs by advertising this way of doing drugs. So it's all about self-control. There's so, that virtue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I do drugs, but in the right way. You're doing oh, yeah. them wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys, you losers do drugs this way. Like, we're winning when we do drugs this way. Everyone who does drugs just for fun, they're a bunch of fucking losers. I mean, this is also about... Um, Barbara Ehrenreich's book, Fear of Falling. It's all about fear of falling into pleasure, fear of falling into hedonism, fear of falling into the other, fear of falling in love. It's all about um, managing your um, psycho, your psyche. And I'm afraid that, you know, generations of people have been damaged by this. I mean, if you go to see a therapist now in order to get any kind of care with our managed care, you have to fill out like, are you depressed from a scale of one to 10? Or how are you, how often do you feel um, like suicidal? Three times a day, two times a day, once a day, once a month. It's like the, everything has become um, quantified, but in this really stupid way. And then, and then the, the algorithmic world and this microdosing world are all like actually fitted together in this one view of like the life force as actually something that has to be quantified, readable through an algorithm, and then um, optimized, maximized, um, made efficient. There's no like human being there when you are having to fill out in order to get some mental health, if you're really in distress, if you have to fill out a hundred of these questions in order to even get it to see a clinician, like... How sad do you feel on a scale of one to ten? Sorry, that's like one example of like a a, a real world effect of this. But I guess I just have a larger question where like you said earlier that like uh, these people are 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 killing, you know, forget any sort of class based like socialist politics. You said they've largely killed the liberal project overall. And I guess just like outside of these various strategies and technologies these people use to manage and cope with their own base instincts and decaying, you know, bodies, uh, like what, what what are the like effects of this like politically like like how has it killed like the liberal project like as a whole so um that's a really good question will and you know um since i've been called a fascist recently on twitter you will want to take this with a grain of salt but um <laughs> the universalist principles of liberalism high liberalism was based on the fact that baseline human beings have something in common of scientific reason was um, a moment uh, does create progress. Um, we can be in a field of disagreement and contradiction because we are baseline the same, or we share like some kind of social um, platform by which we have to, and we struggle over the proper use of um, resources, the um, correct political line in order to achieve like maximum social um, benefits for all. The the PMC in its late in its most vanguard form right now denies universalism. It denies like if you talk about universalism, they they'll call you you know um you know you're you're a dipshit because everyone is there. They've uh, maximized the potential of American pluralism to create this idea that everyone is different in this like micro dosed way, and therefore our identities. Um, have to be recognized or centered. And there's this like kind of weird inhuman centering and recognition and visibilization of the other. But basically, we have nothing in common. We have shit all in common. And um, modernity, as I've said before, you know, created all these toxins for the planet. So we have to find these different ways of living and being consuming that create the lowest um, footprint. But as, as you... As we all know, the environmental disaster that we live in is not going to be adjudicated individually, but in this like, but for the PMC and it's like really, really extreme neoliberal vanguard um, ideological production, we are all like super special individuals. And all we do, all we have to do is optimize our relationship to ourselves, our relationship to our particular difference. And 
that's like the political, that's all the ho- political hope that we can have. And it's just so demobilizing. And even in left circles, we see this happen all the time. Like, you know, I'm really offended by what you said. Or I don't feel seen. Like we make fun of this, but when someone says that, like you're really offending me, uh, you know, as a little monad n- 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 node in this um, depoliticized field, it sucks all the air out of the room because everyone's terrified of that. It's like everyone can be a little Stalin in our hyper pluralist microdose society. Everyone gets to be the the baby in the little outlet monitor. Everyone um, gets to be the baby. Well, yeah. it's interesting too. Like again, with you talk about like obliterating the liberal project, the Little Red Schoolhouse is a perfect example of that. Like they horseshoed theory themselves back into segregating their class at right. by <laughs> race. And I remember, you know, growing up with the sort of like it was sort of like peak like self-esteem like uh you're special you're different thing which is actually a terrible thing to tell a child Mm -hmm. a child needs to know that you're not different they need to know that they're actually there's a place for you in society that uh that uh you are uh, made of the same stuff as everyone else it's not that everyone is special it's that everyone is important and when you go towards the idea that everyone is special you actually end up with this weirdly rigid kind of counterintuitively like a uh, hegemonic idea of individuality that erases all factors of you as an individual. It's like everyone is all of these people who think of themselves as, you know, creative individuals, like they're still all wearing the same things. They're all, you know, getting their mattress from tufted needle or whatever it is. They're all, you know, because the only way they have to distinguish themselves is through consumption, which they abhor, but they don't have anything else. But the, the whole thing about the self-esteem thing um, was really interesting because it really was the ter- the neoliberal turn towards us hyper-individualization. Because what you expect then as an individual is the world to reflect back to you like positive, reaffirming self-esteem issues. You know, under high liberalism and, you know, in the socialist utopia, you the, the individual has to earn confidence, which is much more powerful than self-esteem because in self-esteem you're just in this like biofeedback loop and you you're expect people it. to like yeah. tell you it's not tell you like everything is really good it's totally antisocial and i feel like what was taken away from um children who were brought up with the, up with the self-esteem thing is the actual ability to build confidence based on your um your aspirations towards these universal ideals. So you have all of these very, very fragile people who are expecting the world to give them feedback on something they don't feel like they really deserve. And I saw that happening in my students. When I first started teaching, I taught like, you know, the first generation of self-esteem raised children. And I realized like, even if they didn't have the ability, I was supposed to encourage them. And that was like right. exactly the opposite of how I was taught by these hardcore, hard ass, you know, public school teachers in New York who I loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the other thing is actually it isn't um, damaging to fail. Like it's uh, there's we needed to. And I think Christopher Lash was really good about this when he talked about sports and games where he's like, actually, people should fail more often. It should just be low stakes. Yeah. Like or no stakes. Ideally, it's just like failure should be a, a, a part of life that doesn't influence your ability to survive, which is right. why sports are great, because you're like, I was I just got destroyed. But also, I'm literally fine. Yeah. OK. So uh, speaking of being destroyed, I got I've got another one here more related to the health stuff. This is a, a an odd choice, but I noticed this because I encountered this particular product um, when I was doing, uh, like the uh, they had like the the COVID vaccination volunteer intake thing, and then they vaccinate. Oh volunteers. yes, it's a horrible this tragedy. Thing. It's this I'll go thing. into it at some point because like what at like whatever they need they need volunteers and like the, you know the whole thing. But it's like no one has a job. This is a perfect time for a public works program Mm. why don't you fucking hire people to do this Mm -hmm. why are you running off volunteers but anyway uh so one of the things i I did was take people's temperature and i Mm. did it using this thing uh which is a it's it's called the eye health um and it's a it's a no touch uh thermometer 
there are tons of no-touch thermometers now. All of them are better than this one. First of all, the display you cannot see in the sunlight. And because you had to do this whole thing in a, like a stadium parking lot through a line of cars uh, in the middle of like the California desert in fucking Pomona, uh, like you can't see it. You can't read the reading. Second of all, it's very sensitive to outdoor weather. So we were getting people uh, who showed like, you know, they are actually like 35 degrees or uh or 107 degrees, and we would have to take... It's a faulty product. It's poorly designed. But it looks not even, like, currently, like a, like, a, like a contemporary Apple product, but maybe, like, a 2012 iPhone, and it's called an iHealth. No, no association with it. It's just kind of trying to jump on the brand, uh, like, aesthetic. But I was going through the um, product reviews for it on Amazon, and there was this one guy who was so sweet. He says, I love the design of this thermometer. It's also super easy to use. Unfortunately, I just don't feel ours is accurate. I, texted, I tested it against several others, and the others were within 0.02 degrees. And this one was always at least a whole degree off one way, way or another. I can't rely on it as our main thermometer, which is disappointing. It's like, but however, he still gave it three stars. Even though it's this giving inaccurate like, readings of people's temperature, it just looks good. <laughs> but it looks great. It looks great. Look at it. And you can't even read it. It's horrible. We were like bitching about these things the entire time. And this is I the, know this for is a the fact official it has a thermometer. Because it looks clean and sleek. Yeah. I, I don't know why they had so many of these. They had other ones too. But I wonder if there was like a contract or something. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's something super dark about it. But it looks very futuristic it looks very steve jobs but it doesn't fucking work and in the middle of like i'm like taking the temperature of really really old people it needs to be accurate they could die if you sneeze on them like so so you just think this is part of the the pmc's love of um um packaging the um the iphone thing like for him is actually featured a smartphone so there really yeah. is this like question of the sleekness. And I also feel like, you know, one of the things that um, this class loves is to pretend that nothing takes any, no, nothing needs work, right? So all of the iPhone products and everything just look like they were birthed by some giant robot in the sky. No one put it right. together. It's like there's no casing. You, it's all, it's all the about making the, the all labor about invisible. The, it's about yeah, hiding the it's, labor. It's that about hiding it. the labor. And so even like, even as you're, you know, taking people's temperatures and working and volunteering because they're not going to pay people to actually do this like public health service, which is really important. You have this faulty thermometer, which is beautifully packaged, which makes you feel like you're not at work. You're just playing with your iPhone and it's beautifully sleek. Like no one even made it because it just dropped out of the sky out of the, you know, um, the, the generosity of the eye giver, Whatever yeah. that is, the, the <laughs> vagina of the giant eye giver gives us these big, these beautifully packaged products. That's where they yeah. come from, right? The big jobs in the sky. And never mind that it doesn't work because it looks like it. No, looks like it, it looks works. really good. And when you're working, you don't feel like you're working because you've got this really good-looking gadget thing that's happening. Yeah, I did not understand why you put that on there, but now I realize it's the official temperature taker of the California vaccination program. So. Yeah, and uh, the nurses don't fucking like them, so I don't know why I I they, they got a bad batch, uh, have some sort of contract or whatever. But they're they're very smooth. Maybe when your um, boyfriend's peen doesn't work because he didn't take his blue chew, you can use it as a. You know, <laughs> it does have sex a sex toy. toy kind of look to it. Yeah, and you can use it as a sex toy and take your the temperature of your vagina before you put on your things. Well, there are like, there are PMC love. sex toys, but I I had to I had to leave <laughs> something to to the imagination. Uh, so I'm putting uh, two more links in links in here. Uh, Marie Kondo. Um, one is just her container store, and two is that she sells a decorative tuning fork crystal uh, rose quartz set. So to me, the anti-clutter person selling you new age woo is very strange. I don't fault the girl for selling containers. You got to put shit in shit. Um, but I'm also pro stuff. Uh, I, I like things and <laughs> objects. And I like um, 
Uh, Are you I, like I, clutter? Are you hoarding like Will? You're, what do you hoard? I, I have too many books. Uh, I have uh, too many like uh, sort of tchotchke knickknack things I've picked up on my travels. Things that are um, uh, precious to me, uh, you know, but uh, ultimately not very uh, expensive or useful. Um, but she's, you know, does this spark joy thing, which is a very like whether or not isn't your ability to experience joy kind of um, dependent on your state of mind and condition of surviving or thriving at the moment like if you're actually depressed like maybe you would be during a, a pandemic or or in the midst of poverty does anything spark joy like um it's all about this restraint you know consumerism right you don't want to buy the um big golden whatever that the golden cap that trump enjoys this this particular thing which is a tuning fork and a crystal rose set is something that allegedly Marie Kondo, um, d um, she tunes herself every day. She strikes the rose quartz with the tuning <laughs> fork and she has this, like, she tunes herself. And this is supposed to be really good for everyone. Like, we should all be tuning ourselves with a $75 rose quartz thing and a tuning fork because Marie Kondo is very centered. She doesn't just center other people or black and brown bodies or yellow bodies. She centers herself first. And I'm like, this is insane. Like, I I wouldn't mind having a tuning fork and a um, rose quartz whatever, but the idea that I would have to tune myself with it, that was like the thing that you know, I guess that sells it too, but that, that was the thing that was like freaking me out. Like actually kind of tempted I, too. Like I probably need to tune myself. I am extremely stressed out and angry. I'm a very angry person. And maybe if I tune myself with a rose quartz tuning fork, like I would be more centered and less angry. I prefer to be tuned by others. Um, <laughs> I just don't trust my own uh, my own she, abilities with she this. She tunes herself every day. This is part of the um part the thing the um selling point. And I feel like this is how you we treat our the PMC loves to treat itself like it's some like the self is something that needs to be managed and tuned. And all of its anti bias training now that it's sticking down our throats in universities and everywhere else as the world is going to shit and. You know, more and more children are falling into poverty is they give us anti-bias training so we can be more centered, less biased. And I feel like with a tuning fork, it's probably like they just as effective. Like, please take the bias out of your bodies. <laughs> sort of sit there well, and the bi bias leaves your body. Can I just one like one final question? And this could be a quick one. Like you, you talked about like. You know, like the, the sort of this—it's a very secular ideology, but it has a very religious uh, tenor to it. And I'm just wondering how one can, if if one is an apostate or a heretic um, against this vanguard class, what are some of the what are some of the ways in which we can sort of blaspheme or rebel against this uh, th this this new religion? I think Chapo is a very good blasphemer because you admit to just being gamers who are interested in um, in politics. Chapo is blasphemous. I and you know I we're would also be all f we're also all failed, uh, failed uh, PMC. We failed, failed PMC. to integrate right, right, uh, right into right, any professional right, 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 or right. managerial setting. That's right. That's right. So I kind no, but, of think that's what people like. They're like, oh, I also uh, graduated after two thousand eight and was screwed. Right. No, but will the thing is that if I answered you, then I would be like just participating in the advice industry thing like here here's how to undo the pmc in you when you meet the pmc buddha in the path kill the pmc <laughs> buddha there's like no there's no way out like even the questions are um are, are phrased in this like pmc ether i just feel like um it is it is so um pervasive this and ubiquitous and now finally we are able to talk about it just to identify it. It's like a microbe that's in us. And now we can finally actually say like, this is what it is because it used to be like, this is what really oppresses us. What is it? You know? Um, and now we can say that it is a class, a hegemonic class that tries to monopolize knowledge, expertise, virtue, um, 
and teach us how to experience pleasure. It doesn't want to monopolize pleasure. It actually wants to extirpate any kind of pleasure or immediate sensuous experience that it does not mediate. And that's what's really terrifying about it. Right. Uh, the restoring, uh, restoring some kind of imaginary balance through managing, maybe with a, with a crystal tuning fork thing or people are terrorized i mean you guys don't realize like how much people who are employed in pmc dominated industries right now are just full of fear yeah well they should have uh, uh failed like us and started a podcast no no not everyone can be as funny as you guys no that's like the exceptional um horatio alger failed pmc <laughs> yes. story no yeah no. we're the we're the not ragged- a formula not a formula Amber. people should be paid to be di- ragged dick pills yeah ragged ragged dick pills no okay ragged yeah dick pills <laughs> Sell them raggedy dick pills. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, it's again, like, I, I don't want people to come out of this being like, oh, I own the period panties. And my part of the problem is like, <laughs> no, look, you got to buy panties, whatever. It's like not about the panties. It's about the fact that it's not about the panties. Yeah. It's about the fact that we have to start thinking of a of a of a universalist, um, you know, material politics, which precludes um, like putting any. uh virtuous um, sort of lifestyleism of liberalism uh, at the fore. Right. That's right. That's absolutely right. All right. Well, All Catherine, right. Lewis, thank you very much. The book thank is Virtue Hoarders, The Case Against the Professional Managerial Class. We will put a link to it. It's very short. It's really fun. Everyone should read it and uh, start your own um, PMC shopping list because what the I, fuck else is there to do right now? Besides I wrote it online. like a punch in the gut. So if you like that, just like get ready and get punched in the gut. That, yeah. The book is like. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thanks, Catherine.